We are back with Danielle. I am. I cannot tell you how much I just love this conversation, and I'm getting like all excited and animated. Danielle's like, okay, <laughs> okay. No, I love the energy. Okay, I love the energy. This is it's an important. It's an important discussion. It is so important, and we started just talking about you know what vulnerability is, and you did a beautiful job of redefining what vulnerability looks like, and it doesn't have to be so high stakes, and also it may look different for each one of us. And that's something that I think is really important when we talk about black women and the challenges of being a black woman is that, that feeling invulnerable and not feeling safe to do that, and also a lot of us are in parentified relationships with people, and we don't realize that. And really, friendship is about intimacy to me. And I feel like we're in a world that is, you know, overly present with connection and very absent with intimacy. And mm -hmm. a lot of us get that from our friendships or should be seeing our friendships as a space for that. But if we're in that parentified dynamic, your job isn't to create intimacy with your children in that way, right? Where it's a mutual reciprocal I <laughs> give and take. So what can you tell us? How can we start to cultivate intimacy in our platonic relationships? Okay, so right out the gate, this is going to sound a little odd, but you know, when we think about intimacy, we think about feelings of closeness and feelings yes. of, and that's all nice and good. I know I love feeling chemistry, you know, so I've kind of been like separating these tiers in this way. And I'd be curious to hear, you know, your thoughts on this, but you know, I've defined chemistry as, you know, that it's something that just feels good. I don't have to really have any real knowledge of you. I could have just met you at the restaurant and I'm like, okay, she's cool. Like conversation just flows so easy. Like we have this chemistry and I don't know much about you, but it flows. Yeah. And then we have, um, oh God, I just like blanked chemistry. Oh my God, sorry. You're totally fine. On. Take your time. Take your oh time. Oh my God. Okay, this is actually a burst. I'm so sorry. You're totally um, fine. You're geez. totally oh, fine. Oh my God. Okay, yes, I just said it. <clears throat> and then we have closeness where I'm getting more knowledge of you as a person. So I'm feeling close to you because I'm learning you. And then we have intimacy and, and platonic in this intimacy. And here's the thing is intimacy to me signifies that the feelings of closeness may waver up and down. We might be in a season where our chemistry, it's not clicking. It's feeling kind of clunky. We're off, but I feel comfortable. I can still be myself here. Maybe we're not having highs of highs in this season, but I'm not trying to fix, change you. You're not trying to fix, change me. And all of who I am is safe and welcome here. And sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean we're, we're on a high. And I say that to say, one of the things we can do to start feeling more closeness and achieving more intimacy is to lean into healthy conflict because the research tells us that on the other side of healthy conflict is often the platonic intimacy you've been looking for. And so normally we think about, you know, how can I achieve more int intimacy with my friends? And we're thinking about things we can do to feel deeper and feel more warm and fuzzies. And that might be a part of it. But I also wonder, do you feel safe to say, hey, what did you mean by what you said last night? Because I, I, I think I feel some kind of way. Help me out. What did you mean? Right. Do I feel safe doing that? Because I have noticed the friends that I feel comfortable doing that with, I feel the closest to. Yes, I agree with that. It really is. Intimacy is about authenticity and trust. So it's about who do you trust? Not necessarily who mm. you have the biggest feelings for at that moment, because that, like you said, waxes and wanes, life changes. But who do you trust and who can you show up with the trust as your full self? And like the step toward intimacy, I try to tell people is just being yourself, because what you cannot cultivate intimacy. We sometimes want we want everything. And then we have to be honest about what are we giving? You cannot expect intimacy if you get 10% of me in any conversation and you don't actually know who I am, then I cannot expect necessarily for us to reach that level of intimacy where I feel so close and so bonded to you, right? It just doesn't make sense. And conversely, these, again, I love your framework because it's these mini exercises of trust. It is a mini check-in through conflict. Don't wait until the friendship is dying and be like, oh, girl, I got a list. Let's go through it. And yes. let's see, you messed me up this date. That That is not going to lead. That's not the intimacy is not on the other side of that conflict. That might be a friendship breakup, right? That's not going there. But these mini moments of, hey, you made a comment and I felt a way and I want to explore this with you. I want to make sure that I received it the right way. 
you know, or you looked at me away after I said something, and I want to make sure I didn't hurt you, you know, like I want to just check in how you're doing. Those mini moments, just checking in, first of all, being the person to say, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. Girl, I'm here. Are you okay? Those mini moments again, that's what people don't realize. That's the building block of intimacy. Authenticity and mini moments of trust and risk is what builds that, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I love your breakdown and yes, that formula of authenticity plus trust for sure. And I also really appreciate how you're, you know, emphasizing that this is, that these are small practices over time. Um, I've been reflecting a lot lately on how I think our hunger, almost like this collective hunger for more depth, more active friendship, more connection community. We're all so hungry for it. And I think because of that, sometimes we rush into things or think we need some big grand thing because I need to solve this problem now. But you're right. It's those micro moments. It's small bids of trust. It's in this moment, I have an opportunity to to tell her how I really feel because she asked, right? Are we good? And, and but, I, but we're not good. But I don't want to make a big deal. Like these small opportunities to cultivate over time, deeper feelings of, okay, I trust her. I can count on this person. How can I show her she can trust me? It's been a while. Let me check in. Like these small daily, just active, tangible practices of showing up um, and showing up authentically. And um, I hope that that helps people like this, out, this approach you're outlining about doing it in these small moments, how achievable and possible and accessible it is. It's not something where some people naturally have it and some don't. Or, you know, well, this friendship just has it or or I need to figure out this big thing I need to do to change my friendships, these small practices consistently over time. And so I, I love that you're speaking to that because that's really how we, you know, enjoy more satisfaction in our friendships overall. It's absolutely, it's how we change behavior and change dynamics. It's not done in one big act. Mm -hmm. And that kind of brings you to is there's some people who are listening to this and going, uh-oh. <laughs> like some of the people in my life, I do not feel like that is even available to me. It hasn't been available in a decade or however long, or I started this relationship. And some of us also are listening to this and realizing that we built friendships, which you pointed this out, on highs, on trauma bonding, oversharing, lack of health, lack of balance. And we bonded in those moments. Like I, I very freely about talking about an experience I had with a friend where it's like, when I reflected upon the breakup, the friendship, which did not go well, um, mm. what I realized is we bonded over sadness. And once one of us started to get healing, there was no intimacy. There was no, it was very much transactional in a very unhealthy way. And so my question for you is, in the midst of all this context, is really understanding well, if you're going, I don't think I have these people, how do we begin to readjust expectations of friendships and have that big conversation about letting go of friendships with grace? Mm, that's really great. Um, if you're, you know, if someone's listening and they're hearing all this and they're like, okay, this, these, that sounds beautiful but I don't have that. I don't have spaces I can take this stuff back to and like safely practice it in a healthy way. Uh, the first thing I would say is the first step is, you know, listening to stuff like this, downloading new messages. What does it look like to have healthy friendships? What's what's a model of what it looks like to, to have a hard conversation? Downloading and saving up images of what healthy relationships look like. Um, and then kind of starting to reflect, okay, can I show up in this way? Because a lot of us want it, but then we still have you know, maybe toxic or, or unproductive tendencies. So kind of starting with, okay, what are some of the barriers to experiencing healthy friendship that have to do with me? I'm uncomfortable speaking up for myself. I'm uncomfortable with boundaries. I don't want to make people mad. So what do I need to kind of work through, right? Um, and then the next thing I think is, you know, to your point, leading with that authentically when I have an opportunity for a new connection from the very beginning, showing up as me so that it feels less risky over time because I already started, I front loaded this relational experience with this is who I am. This is what I got. Uh, that way I'm never getting to a point in the relationship where I'm like, okay, when can I drop the facade? Like, when can I start to show real me? I mean, it's, it, that's difficult over time. Um, and then also I would say, you know, you can ask for what you want. So recently I was with a friend, we went to coffee and, and she said to me, um, you know, I'm thinking I'm in a place like I want more active friendships. I do. 
I want to call a little bit more. I want friends to do things with. That's where I am. And I happen to be in the same place, but I just really admired how she was like, this is what I want and wasn't apologizing for it. Wasn't nervous that it was going to make her look clingy. Does this make me look like a high maintenance friend? It was like, this is where I am. And and she was almost inviting me into it with her. And it, it worked out that I am in the same place. I want the same things, right? Um, but asking for it up front and trusting that that's the only way she's going to get closer to those people is by leading with it instead of diluting it, denying it, downplaying it so that I don't appear clingy, desperate, needy, you know, um, demanding. Um, and I think those things, a combination of those things is helpful to like, quote unquote, finding your people. And the last thing I'll say is like an exercise is what are the things that you, you value? I mean, truly, like if I, you know, not just asked you on a list, if I muted you and watched your life, would I be able to tell what comes first for you? What are the things you honor? Are you leading with that? Because that really will attract uh, the right people. Some of us aren't living in the value. We say I prioritize friendship, but we don't, right? And then we're disappointed that we connect with people who don't prioritize friendship. So are you leading with it? Because I really do believe that kind of puts you on the path toward um, being with people who are aligned in that way. But once you find those people being comfortable, front loading the conversations with what your friendship goals are, what your friendship style is, that will help you to negotiate uh, in friendship, which we have space for. Uh, I'll end with this. I often hear people say like, well, I think she wants this, but I'm more of a this person. And it's like, okay, well, talk it through together. You don't have to bend to whatever she puts on the table. You can negotiate in friendship. Oh, you're more of like a, a daily texter, huh? Okay, well, girl, I'm going to tell you now. I'm, I'm more of a phone call girl on like a weekend. So I might not be able to hit you through the week, but like, do you want to do Fridays or Saturdays for our catch up? That's me front loading it with, let me take out the guesswork. You do your thing, but I'm not going to be my best self unless it's a phone call on the weekends, you know, but we can negotiate here because for the right people, we're willing to accommodate and adapt. Yes. And I, I think boundary work, I tell people boundary work is not always saying no. That's what you're talking mm -hmm. about. It's an exercise in boundaries. And we think, again, in extremes, it's saying no. Girl, don't call me then. You know, mm -hmm. it's like if you can't, you can't hit me every day with a text, don't call me. But really, the majority of boundary work is you called it front loading. I called it preference setting it. That's what mm -hmm. I call it, right? Telling your preference. My friends know I am an introvert. I'm an extrovert introvert, so I'll con you. I'll make you think I'm, I'm here for the party. I'm not. I'm not. Just ask my friends. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Eight o'clock, Kelly is in her pajamas, right? And I'm recouping. We go on a trip. I got to go have a separate room and I got to go. If, you, if I disappear, it's not I hate you. It's that I need to go recharge. I love you. And that's why I'm off in the corner. So I front load now. I didn't do it before. Full transparency. Mm -hmm. I front load, as you call it, I set my preferences. I say, oh yeah, you're not gonna get a call back after 10, right? That's just not happening, I'm in bed. But again, that reduces conflict because now people know. And I think ultimately friendship is about joy. And I think when we come back, I wanna kind of close this conversation talking about joy, but I wanna talk about how managing expectations and letting go with grace of those expectations is a, an act of joy. And then I want to hear from you about what, what brings you joy, because I think that's just always important to hear. So more to come with Danielle as we close out this conversation that has flown by, honestly, and get into how we center joy in our friendships. Mm -hmm.